we call the compute IP checksum which we've defined earlier and pass it the IP header and the length of the IP header. See I just played around a little bit here and use the IHL into 4. Note that this is exactly same as size of struct IP header. Once we are done constructing the IP header, we go ahead and return that as an Einstein character block. So now coming on to the main function, it's almost identical as in the previous case. We define the raw socket, we define the pointer to a packet, to an Ethernet header, to an IP header and finally the packet length. We first create the raw socket of type ETHP all because we are going to inject both the link header as well as the Ethernet header and the IP header everything. Then we bind the raw socket to an interface given by the user as input let's say it's ETH0 and then first thing which we do now is to create the Ethernet header by using create Ethernet header which you've seen in the previous example. Then we create the IP header. Now note that the packet length is nothing but the Ethernet header and the IP header size together. So we go ahead and find that out. Now, till now, we have created the Ethernet header and the IP header separately. It's time we put both of these headers one after the other, the Ethernet header and then the IP header in order to construct the full packet. So here is the place wherein we allocate memory for the full packet, which is of size packet len which is Ethernet header and the IP header sizes together. Then we first copy the Ethernet header of course. And then after that we copy the IP header. But after the Ethernet header, that is where we add the plus size of ETH header to the beginning of the packet. So that we go to that offset where the Ethernet header ends, which is after 14 bytes from the beginning of the packet array. So we copy both the headers one after the other and then we send the packet onto the wire, send raw socket. This is exactly the same as in the previous example. Once we are done, we go ahead and free all the memory which we had allocated and close the raw socket. So now let's try and run this example. The source mic is the same, so this filter is valid. Forgot to set a filter here, so maybe we can just set an expression. set the equals to and put in the six A's press in OK and then start the capture to set a capture interface That's it. We are up and running. Some reason Ethereal seems to be running a little slow on this computer. Okay. So let's run the program now. Give it the input of ETH0. You can say packet sent successfully. So for some reason this filter hasn't caught it okay we have sent the packet successfully and as you can see 
192.168.0.10 and 192.168.0.11 these were the two source and destination IPs which we had mentioned and we can see our Ethernet destination address here the source address here and the rest of it of course is the IP header also if you look at Ethereal we will see the Ethernet header the way we crafted it right actually there is no trailer seems to be a bug with the older version of ethereal and IP header is exactly the way we formed it right so as you can see the identification field is 111 this is the way we put it the time to live field is also 111 so like a special signature fragmentation offset was 0 protocol as we mentioned to be TCP and the header checksum is correct which is good so our checksum algorithm works fine as well and the source and destination IPs are also present so you can actually play along with this program try and change various uh, fields in the IP header or the Ethernet header and look at the dump which a sniffer gives you and check out you know that things are actually working this would be a good exercise for you also I would advise you to customize this whole create IP header function by taking in inputs from the user and passing it on here so the more you practice the better you will get anyway in the next video we will look at how to construct the TCP header and the data which goes along with it thank you